This is a fog machine. Why do we have one? Well, we've talked about airflow before in terms of push versus pull for radiators in past videos, but it dawned on us that not everyone knows how airflow inside a case actually works. It's pretty hard to see exactly what happens since, you know, air is invisible. So we took it upon ourselves to show you, the people, what different types of airflow really look like. To showcase all of this, we first start off with the case, the Corsair 760T. Why? Well, it's the best case we have for showing you the airflow since it has a nice large window. The fans we've chosen today are Noctua's AF F12s and A14s, which are known for their excellent airflow and static pressure. Not exactly in that order though. Speaking of pressure, there are two types inside a case, positive and negative pressure. Let's start off with positive first. Positive air pressure is when you have more air coming into the case than you do leaving it. It's known for being an excellent defense against dust, but you will need a fan filter over every single air intake. The idea is that by filtering all of your intakes, only clean dustless air gets inside your case. Once it's inside, hot air will passively escape through any holes or gaps that are not filtered. Negative pressure, as some of you may have guessed, is when you take more air out of the case than you put in. Some will argue that having a negative pressure setup will result in heat being exhausted out the system quicker. While this may be true, in a negative setup, it creates a vacuum effect where air will find its way through any gaps or holes in your case. This means that you have a higher chance of building up dust as dirty air can enter your case through the non-filter holes or gaps. Let's demonstrate some common setups. For our first test, we'll have two fans in the front as intakes, cover up the top panel and have no exhaust fans. This is an extreme example of positive air pressure and should leave you with the least amount of dust. For the next setup, we will have three fans on top and one fan as the rear as exhausts with zero intake fans. This is an extreme example of negative air pressure and should give you the best possible cooling by removing the hot air from your case as fast as possible. Finally, here is a balanced setup with neutral airflow. This means that you have an equal number of intake fans and exhaust fans. This is probably the airflow configuration that most people have in their system. It's pretty good at keeping both dust out and expelling hot air and is the easiest to set up. Now, no matter what sort of setup you think is good for your specific needs, always remember, you want cold air in and hot air out. The number one rule is to have a smooth direction for your airflow. You don't want conflicting fans that blow into each other creating turbulence. That will create dead spots with no airflow and can lead to overheating components. When you're calculating the amount of intake and exhaust you have, don't forget to consider your CPU heatsink and video card as well. It may not look like it, but large CPU heatsinks with a fan on the back or blower style video cards will both act as exhausts. One last note, for those of you who have trouble remembering which way your fan blows, some fans have a little arrow pointing in the right direction or you can just remember that the flow goes towards the hub. That's pretty much the basics of airflow. We'll be performing airflow tests on future case reviews, but leave a comment down below on any cases you'd like to see the airflow pattern for. Anthony is already working on using the fog machine with a radiator to compare push, pull, and push pull fan configurations. So keep an eye out for that coming soon. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.